the book of Luke chapter 16. Let's look at verse 10. He said, He that is faithful, in that which is least, is faithful also in what? In what? Now, Jesus was beginning to give the reason for the parable, the reason for the story. Now, here comes an unjust steward. There was something he acted wisely that hurt him. But he was unjust. Praise God. So Jesus said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in what? In much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust in what? So the unjust steward that has expressed his attitude in handling that business. If you give him the one that is bigger, he will do the same thing. I will, I will together. He will do the same thing. So he said, if therefore he have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, unrighteous, he said, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Somebody said true riches. Say it louder, say true riches. So there is a difference between true riches and unrighteous power. Many of us, the money we have that unrighteous power. True riches, we are not, we're not able to handle this. True riches have not been delivered to us yet. We've never handled that true riches. That is the true riches of God. True riches. Praise God. He said, the little one you see, that one that you are doing, that you are unable to handle it, you are unable to manage it, who will give you that big one? And so, if we define true riches, what is it all about? What is the meaning of true riches? So simple. It doesn't need any long definition. True riches is faithfulness. The basis of true riches is faithfulness. Faithfulness in everything that you find yourself in anything you do will produce true riches. Unfaithfulness will never give you true riches. So true riches is not just money at all. True riches will affect you in everything at all. So the unjust was was not faithful with that which was given to him. So if you are not faithful with the least, how will you be faithful with the bigger one? No, it's not. So some people say, no, I'm waiting until when I gather. I am waiting until when it is much. I am waiting. No. That greeting started when it is small. Don't wait until when you are big before it starts to greet. Amen. That respect started. When you are still who you are, don't wait until when you have car and you have body car before you begin to know. Praise the Lord Jesus. I will take that. That is always the duty to start with. There are people that come to church without offering. Are they are they working? Yes. Are they in business? Yes. Do they make money? Yes. But what was the problem? The problem is the money is not enough. So if the money is not enough, how would they give offering? How would they give offering? Faithfulness. Amen. I, I want to get Faithfulness. From that little, that is a faithfulness you need to put on. From that little, that will not will bring the true riches, the true wealth, and the true money. Hallelujah! Is somebody following? So faithfulness is very important and is key. They place you in the place, in the, in the system, or in the company, or organization, or in the department, and they entrusted you with. You know, valuable things. And after a while, they will talk back. You will not give an account of it. 
What you are saying in essence is number one, you are not capable. Number two, you cannot grow more than that thing they gave you and you will not be able to account for, account for it. You can't grow more than it. So you keep going back and forth. That is the life you will see around that person. Faithfulness gives you two riches. In pain error, faithfulness out of it, in whatever you are doing, whether you are offering or attack, that faithfulness, that does not bring the two riches. You are serving. Anywhere you find yourself, you are serving. Your faithfulness in the place of service will bring the two riches at the end of your service. In the area of in any aspect of your life, then what it means be faithful. Be faithful. If you want to know and want to see how rich your union is, your relationship is in that marriage, then there must be faithfulness. When you see couples faithful to each other, you will see how rich that relationship, that union, how rich it is. It is difficult for you to multiply it. It's difficult for you to break it. Difficult for you to see a crack, a sign of crack. Why? Because of faithfulness that is involved. Praise God. Abraham has a servant. His senior servant, his name was Eliezer. Of Damascus. Amen. Amen. Do you know that that man, Eliasa, if not for Abraham, he would have died long before you know Abraham even met him or Abraham took him to his own house. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Abraham had to rescue him. And Abraham took him along with him. And the man was faithful with Abraham. So it was as a result of the faithfulness that Abraham saw in Eliasa and he could trust Eliasa, believe and confide on him. And I said, Eliasa, you will be the one that will stand as a father. You will be the one that will go and get a wife for my son. Abraham was so key. Doing everything to see that Isaac did not marry only. And so he entrusted everything to Eliezer. And he know that Eliezer will not bring shame. Eliezer will not disappoint him. There are many of us, little opportunity we have, there are some that give us. At the end of the day, it just shape, just bring shape. Amen. You will not be present because of lack of faithfulness. Lack of faithfulness. Praise the name of Lord. So faithfulness is the basis of what? Of two riches. In Genesis chapter 41 from verse 40, we saw the case of Joseph. Whatever that led Joseph to occupy the position he occupied that we he has become a reference for today, all of that was as a result of God's faithfulness. Praise God. Result of faithfulness. The faithfulness of Joseph was tested. In Potiphar's house, was tested. He left that place to prison. His faithfulness was tested. He left that place and he showed himself before Pharaoh. His faithfulness was tested. And it is no matter he was faithful. Listen, you might be gifted. You might have grace. But when you are not faithful, there is no way the two riches will come. Joseph was gifted. Joseph has grace. So it was his gifts that made him to stand before King that the Bible said that the gift of a man will make a way for him 
came and he was found before kings. So it was a gift of chosen that promoted him, that paved way for him. Your gift will pave way for you, but your gift will not establish you. What establishes you, it is your faithfulness with the gift. So the gift will be clearly chance for you, be clearly chance for you, clearly chance for you, clearly way for you. So where there is no faithfulness, you will be limited with your gifts. So if Joseph was found faithfulness with the gifts of God upon his life that made him stand before him, and as a result of the faithfulness, they gave him the whole country. The whole country. Because of his faithfulness. So this is how true it is called. Faithfulness is something that you must find. Especially when you are in a corrupt system. Corrupt generation. Corrupt dispensation of time. It is difficult to find faithful men. Difficult to find faithful men. So difficult, sir. So difficult. Praise God. So difficult. The moment you belong, or you are part of the system, even when you go in clean, if you are not careful, that faithfulness that you are projecting, sometimes the whole people in the system can come up against you. And either they push you out or something will happen. So there will be an attempt and temptation to see that they get you corrupted. How can you be corrupted? So among your friends, among in everywhere you find yourself, how can you be corrupted? In the midst of corruption, they don't want to see any faithfulness. No. And so they will give you millions of reasons why you must be this, why you must be like them, why you must be this. Faithfulness. Praise God. So Joseph was faithful to the end. And hear what Pharaoh told me. He said, Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy words shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So virtually, he gave him everything. So whatever you say, Joseph is one who will listen. Anything you say. So he was entrusted with the cities and everything. Everything. And the point of said, I am Pharaoh. Even whatever you say, I am subject to obey. He removed his sickness and give it to him. He changed his name. If I can remember again. Zarapapenia. And gave him a wife. Asena. Or Asena. As you may like to pronounce it. He said the daughter of the uh, uh, Potiphar. So, Joseph was decorated. President of the Lord Jones. Faithfulness. Amen. We have a servant of Elisha. What's his name? Gehazi, am I right? That was serving his master Elisha. And because of lack of faithfulness, the generation we are boss. Caused with a sickness till today. And then they will see you with that sickness called leprosy. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because of unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. Amen. Amen. 
Verse 44 of Genesis chapter 41. It says, No man shall lift up his head, neither his foot without your permission. Praise God. Without your permission. That was a video of a guy that was going viral these days over a week now. Because of UTME. Are we aware of that? A little girl. When I see her, I just pity her. Praise God. And all these are the consequences of unfaithfulness. Hallelujah. And she looked very bright. Looked very mature. Even with the original score she had, which is 249, or whatever. It is not easy to get that, that man to, to get that started. But why do you want to talk to She just imagine the manipulation. And this is why parents will have a lot of work. Especially this day that we look at children very loose. That many of you cannot tell who your daughter is. Many of you at this point, your daughter is just nine years old. Eight years old, ten years old, you can't vouch for them. You can't. You'll be afraid. Because of what you notice, you can't vouch for them. So when there is unfaithfulness as a culture, a doctrine, you have instituted and you have practiced beginning from your home. Because it's the home, it's not school. It's not the teacher, it's home. Any child that is well trained, brought up from the home, that has a proper training from the home, from the parent, is hardly to be deceived outside. The moment you meet you yourself with other women, other boys, there is a something in you that follows you. You will go and come back and report yourself. How many of your children that will do something wrongly and you come back and they come back and they say, Mommy, I do this. They will keep quiet. They will keep piling that evil deed. Keep piling and they will be going in it. To the point that you, the parents, will not even understand them. Praise God. When the Bible says, train up your child, the way you should go, that when he goes, he will not do what? He will not depart from it. It means that as a parent, you have a responsibility. You have the responsibility. Right from the time they are in the womb, you have a responsibility. Then God won't bring them out from the womb. You have responsibility. You have to a certain age. You have responsibility. But the moment you begin to ignore them, you allow them carelessly. And you are supporting them for every wrong thing. When you are supposed to beat them, you don't beat them. When you are supposed to frown at them, you don't frown at them. You support them for every wrong move. A day will come. They will tell you it is me and my mommy, me and my daddy. Praise God. So we we'll see the faithfulness of Joseph that took him to that level. In the book of Daniel, chapter 47, there are the Bible says that Moses, I mean Joseph, he brought them out because he saw. By vision, he saw. What was ahead? And so he applied the wisdom God has given to him to save the city. To save the city. He put all the lands away from the people because he, he, a time will come that will be famine. And at the time of this famine, people will, will not have food to eat and they will resort in selling their land properly. So what he do? He secure all the land by buying all the land from everybody in Egypt. He did not buy it for himself, but the Bible said he bought it for who? For Pharaoh. Praise God. He bought it for him. How many of you that will be in charge? Where there is money, and nothing will be missing. How many? Even the church of God, nobody fear. That's what I'm telling you, sir. You are telling me so. 
something of a brother in one church I will not mention that you know he, he was counting money. Am I right? He was telling me the brother was counting money in the church. A church where there are crowds, things happen. The pastor trusted him, pastor believed him. And don't worry that that brother counting money was manipulating and taking some amount of money every service. Whatever he's doing, you know that there are some things you do, you are pretending, thinking that you know before whoever that you are not pretending, hypocritical lie. But in whatever you are doing, that is always the eye that sees you, that your master cannot see. Praise the name of the Lord. And there's always a day of judgment. So there is always morning before judgment. Your faithfulness to any man, it is not to that man, but faith. To God. And because I am faithful to God, whatever I connect me with you, I must be faithful to you. Whatever business transaction that connect me with you, I remain faithful. Why? Because I am faithful to God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Faithfulness says to God. The gifts, the man. The pastor was giving him money to him. He was happy with him. When somebody goes to the pastor, there is something new. There was a vision. Something is happening here. No, no, the pastor said, I'll give him money. If not, this brother. Praise God. Until when they now put CCTV. Must we put CCTV to monitor in the church? That tells you how, how bad. The church is no longer a church. But at the government business center, we have people no longer feel it is not a church. There is no discipleship. What makes you a Christian? You don't define it, you don't know it. You, you just come to church. And this is why that's when we come to church, we get imitated. Sometimes when the word of God goes on, we get imitated. What we are after, it is not to see how the word of God transforms us. One of the reasons why the word was given was to transform our life. The reason why Jesus came was to transform our life. Nothing more than that. When your life is not transformed positively, everything you lay your hands will not be transformed. Even the one you are pursuing, you can't enjoy it because first there must be peace within you. It is a peace within you that transcends to all other peace around your life. Can I hear amen? Jesus. 